So the fact that you've clicked on this video is a little bit awkward for one of two reasons. Either one, you think that Earth by Lil Dicky actually is the best song ever written, in which case, this video is not going to be too fun for you. Or you think Earth by Lil Dicky is a horrible song and you're offended that I even suggested it's the best song ever written. Uh, really, it's a lose-lose for me. So like everyone else, I listened to the song back in 2019 when it came out, but honestly, I just laughed it off. I did think it was really goofy, but mostly just like a kid's song. It wasn't until recently that I decided for some reason to revisit the song out of, I guess, just morbid curiosity. It was then that it fully dawned on me. Holy shit, this is the goofiest 4 minutes and 41 seconds of music anyone has ever released, and it's not even close. Honestly, it's a goddamn achievement. Like, Lil Dicky really did something special here. I don't know how this thing came into existence. Think about it, where else can you hear Lil Yachty talk about being AIDS? I'll wait. But we gotta get down to business, all right? First, who is Lil Dicky? He's a rapper who garnered his fame through his humorous and self-aware songs. It was songs like Ex-Boyfriend and Classic Male Pregame that gave him his original success. So that means, to be clear, a track like Earth is not what Lil Dicky is famous for. He didn't make this one for the fans, we don't know where this thing came from. It could have come to him in a dream. But Lil Dicky is not just a rapper anymore. He's also an actor and writer on his critically acclaimed TV show titled Dave. I was honestly surprised when doing research for this video just how positive the reviews were for his TV series. You know, not to be rude or anything, I guess just with the context here, I wasn't expecting to see anything outstandingly good. But okay, pretty much just think of a nice guy rapper who's really silly and quirky, but also self-aware that gets infinite celebrity cameos in his songs. That's Lil Dicky. But it's time for the main event. Where did this thing come from? So to the average listener, it just sounds like a celebrity roll call with a pretty basic message. But there actually is some history behind the song. The main point to talk about when it comes to the history of this song is the charity campaign that was run alongside it. A charity campaign which is undeniably, at least partially, successful. I haven't found anything that suggests that the money isn't going where it's supposed to be. And usually with this kind of thing, it's plastered everywhere if some scandal like that would happen. I have seen some hints that despite saying all of the money is going to charity, only some is, but those are only hints, so I'm not suggesting anything. But no amount of charity money or good intentions can make the weird execution of this already somewhat shallow sentiment good. But okay, for the whole two people who didn't know the song existed before now, you're all caught up. Cheesy song made by cheesy rapper with a cheesy music video that was made for charity. So it's here that I'm presented with a little bit of a, uh, a moral dilemma, if you will. On one hand, I would rather not give whatever label shit this one out any more money for copyright striking my video because me and you both know whatever money they get from doing that isn't also going to charity. And on the other hand, I would absolutely love to play the song and break it down bar for bar like that one guy on TikTok who breaks down when J. Cole, J. Cole wrapped, wrapped a double, double entendre, entendre after a triple entendre. However, to some extent here, I think we can have the best of both worlds. If you haven't heard the song yet, trust me, go look it up, you'll laugh your ass off. But what I'm gonna do is kind of do this genius style. I'll show the lyrics, break them down, but we don't have to play anything. The intro to the song is a little bit silly and cheeky. Mr. Dickey is rapping and singing from the perspective of a human, and he's addressing the world. He's pretty much saying how this song is his PowerPoint presentation to the world as to why he's cool. Now, I can't tell if he's playing into this at all, but I cannot think of a more cliche way to open up a song, and I'm not exaggerating at all. To try to humbly approach the world with a message is so elementary and ironically beneath even Lil Dicky. It's probably a huge part as to why everyone thinks the message to this song is incredibly shallow. The entire intro is just sad. And then the chorus hits. And I'm not gonna lie, I've listened to a lot of Lil Dicky's music, but I gotta confess, I don't hate his singing. I mean, it's nothing revolutionary, but it's definitely listenable. But this chorus it's such a generic pop chorus that's trying so hard to get stuck in your head that it falls flat. It's forgettable. And I know that sounds harsh, but I've now listened to this song dozens of times, and this is the part over anything else I never want to hear ever, ever again. I feel like in some pop songs, the chorus can provide some relief, as pop producers are good at their job. But We Love the Earth is what the demons in my nightmares will be repeating to me 
for the next decade. But after the chorus, no, 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 that's where shit really kicks off. Initially, after hearing Justin Bieber sing about being a baboon, I think most people's brains just kind of check out. It's at that point you realize that this gimmick isn't going anywhere and you're strapped in for another four minutes of celebrities talking about being animals. Because yeah, when you hear Justin Bieber proclaim that he is a baboon, your reaction is that of having to tell the kid in the Spider-Man costume you saw him shoot the webs. Yes, I guess you're Spider-Man, not just a child shooting a silly string at my face. But some of the later ones leave you in absolute awe of the cringe. So here I'm going to leave myself a little bit vulnerable to the comments section, but I've got to admit that Ariana Grande is kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. Her music, to be specific. Listen, man, I don't know, all right? Pop writing is really good, and she's not a bad singer. But when Lil Dicky is writing her lyrics, I guess it's just unlistenable. What Lil Dicky did not think about going into this is that having artists who take themselves any amount seriously sing his lyrics was never going to work. Whether we like it or not, Lil Dicky knows how to deliver Lil Dicky lyrics, which are inherently cringe. His vocal inflection and his tone makes the lyrical content somewhat tolerable. But the clash between Ariana Grande's serious singing and Lil Dicky's absolutely cringy lyrics is just, like I said, unlistenable. We have a rather boring but somewhat uncalled for appearance from Halsey, followed by the first lyric that I genuinely enjoy. Call me immature, call me stupid, I don't care that's kind of funny. I don't know if it's just funny because this song in its entirety is stupid and I'm laughing at it, or if it's genuinely good writing on Lil Dicky's part, but it kind of made me chuckle the first time I heard it. And that was the only time it made me chuckle. I want to be clear. To be honest with you, all the lyrics I'm going to talk about that I genuinely kind of enjoy are just ones where it sounds like Lil Dicky hit the artist up, sent them the lyric, and they just sent it back to him and sound incredibly lost. So, uh, the next three lines of this verse are a little boring and a little weird, and I think the less time we can spend talking about them, the better. But, uh, there they are. I learned one thing, Wiz Khalifa does not have a bad singing voice, so that's kind of cool. I feel like Snoop Dogg's part here is where Lil Dicky's intentions become a little bit muddy. To me, this has the same energy as the announcers at that one YouTube boxing event who kept referencing Snoop Dogg's weed. Like, it's pandering to a very weird degree. Like, this line is for your parents who barely know who Snoop Dogg is, other than the fact that he smokes the ganja. I just want to know what made Snoop Dogg agree to do this. And he is not Kanye West, and thank God he isn't, because if he was, this song would have aged worse than it already has. But it's in the second verse that we realize that no matter how feel-good and innocent the sentiment of the song is, Lil Dicky just cannot help himself. One, two, three, four, five horny-ass bars, man. What were you thinking? And it's at this point that a lot of you are probably thinking just how weird that is, considering the whole song sounds like a kid's song. But trust me, it's not a kid's song. I mean, look, it's plenty evident. But now, Next is another bar that I actually enjoy, thank god, it's Lil Jon, he's a clam, fucking fantastic. But it's towards the end of the second verse, we have my favorite line in the whole song. I am so glad that Lil Yachty said yes to doing this because that is by far the funniest lyric in the entire song. Thing is, I can't tell whether or not Lil Yachty and the producer are in on how bad the song is and they know, or if it's just a crazy coincidence, but everything else seems to cut out for this one lyric. But yeah, I know it's probably in pretty poor taste. I'm, I'm sorry for liking it so much. But why is Joel Embiid on this song? Like, did he run out of people to ask? I, I mean, he doesn't sound that bad, but I just, I don't understand. I'm a little confused as to why Tory Lanez is saying we love the Chinese. I mean, does he have any relation to Asia at all? Does this make any sense to anyone? And this lyric got some hate online, I think for a very good reason. That's kind of a weird thing to say, man. And after yet another chorus, we finally make it to the third verse, which consists of Lil Dicky representing a human in the song. The sad part is that in reality, I don't think Lil Dicky's that bad of a rapper. He's just held back by his bizarre, cringy, surface level subject matter here and I think in a lot of his songs. Oh, and let's not forget, it gets horny again. Like, man, put it in your pants. That's slightly weird. I don't know what what? And after the infamous Leonardo DiCaprio cameo in the song, it closes out by Lil Dicky interacting with Ariana and Bieber, who are of course in character as the baboon and the zebra. Lyrically, that's pretty much it. Let's talk Sonics though. How does the song sound? Well, you have not been able to hear the song this whole video. Again, 
I don't want to give those people any more money. But I figured I should at least mention how the song sounds here just to be thorough. It's horrible. It's probably the worst part of the song. You know what? Actually, I'll play it as background music to this section so you can hear just how awful it really is. It's going for some tropical and indigenous beats with a lot of drums and toms going, but it just doesn't work. It's cheesy. It's stupid. I don't know why he did this. Really, I don't know how much more there is to tell you about how it sounds. It sounds like a really bad song for a really bad kids movie, but it's not for kids. Don't play this for your kids. If you are, what are you doing? So between it sounding like a bad kids movie and the vocal melodies being elementary at best, the song makes you want to rip your hair out chunks at a time. So it's a bad song. It's a really, really bad song. But to be honest, I don't even know why I made this video. You already knew that. And at the end of the day, Lil Dicky, all the artists on this, and the label itself win because I streamed it dozens of times. Let's go. Huh? Back in the mail, it's gone. Uh -huh. She like I smell cologne. Yeah. I just signed a deal, I'm on. 